I know God doesn't hear dead men, but I expect he answers them. What is up everyone and welcome back to History Behind the Horror. For today's video we will be looking at Father Sullivan from Outlast 2. But before you start this video make sure if you did enjoy this video and you'd like to see more Outlast 2 videos coming up soon to please give this video a like, share it and also follow the channel on Twitter. The links to all of that will be in the description and other sources as well. So as always thank you guys so much for checking out this video and I hope you enjoy. Sullivan was born in 1933. In 1966, he worked as a shoe salesman in New Mexico. During these years, Sullivan struggled with financial problems and was about to lose his property due to the large debt that he could not afford. In desperation, Sullivan turned to a late night radio station for solace, but found no comfort in the voice preaching against the evils of fornication. As he listened through the preacher's speech, he started hearing something underneath the static, till he proclaimed to be the voice of God. The voice of God expressed to Sullivan his dissatisfaction with the world and its churches, stating that he needed a new brave prophet. The man walked out into the night and saw in the dark sky a vision like that of Prophet Ezekiel, a terrible, many-faced angelic creature crowned in fire, surrounded by wheels within wheels. The vision bore a prophecy of Sullivan, who would lead a chosen few to paradise and save them from the eternal damnation before the end of days arrived. Filled with purpose, Sullivan abandoned his earthly possessions and started preaching in the streets of New Mexico. His passion inspired people who were lost in the world and they flocked to him for guidance. Over the past years, he had dozens of followers, all whom had donated their possessions to the new church dubbed Testament of the New Ezekiel. They lived in a luxurious ranch owned by a wealthy woman named Lydia. Sullivan continued to receive messages from God, which he faithfully recorded in his book of verse he called the Gospel of Noth. Sullivan often encouraged all the women of the flock to breed frequently, even donating his own seed to the cause and personally delivering each baby. The home births gave the New Mexico police the legal authority to crack down on the cult. With the warrant for health and safety violations, police raided the ranch and arrested a dozen cult members. Sullivan barely escaped with a handful of followers. All of these assets were seized and the church was in serious danger of falling apart. Following the guidance of Moses and Abraham, Sullivan climbed a mountain alone to commute with God. He waited on the mountaintop naked in the wilderness until God's voice commanded that he sacrifice an eye in exchange for true vision. Sullivan pulled out his knife and slit his left eyeball open. With this act, the veil of reality fell away from Sullivan and he saw with absolute certainty the destiny of his church. He foresaw a town deep in the wilderness and hidden from civilization that would be the gateway to the true temple of the testament of the new Ezekiel. He would call this town Temple Gate and take his followers there to prepare for the end time. Sullivan warns his flock that the road will be long and the horrors many and they will all be forced to make difficult sacrifices and impossible choices in the hopes of salvation and paradise everlasting. It was the winter of 1969 when Sullivan and nearly a hundred followers traveled out into the desert and left their wicked worlds behind. In 1971, Sullivan and his followers arrived at the place that will later become Temple Gate. While Sullivan's presence and influence among Temple Gate is the driving force for the entire story, he is very rarely seen himself. Most of his involvement in the plot is limited to his bellowing, passionate gospel echoing throughout Temple Gate via the intercoms, or his insane disciples referring his said gospel. His voice can be heard as he tortures Lynn Langerman, a captured journalist who whom he believes houses the Antichrist. Later in the game, Lynn's husband, Blake, breaks into the church and hides in one of the confession booths, watching as Sullivan and his followers violently torture a couple for information of Lynn's whereabouts as she recently escaped. After finding out she's in the mines with the heretics, a cult which has defected from the testament who want the Antichrist born, Sullivan has the two painlessly put out of their misery. 
The father! I'm not anybody's father. I just killed me. You have to kill me. North is coming back with Mary. He'll hurt her and I'll talk. If you kill me, he won't have reason to hurt her. Please. <laughs> We found her, Lizard. Time to flee amongst the skull. Not the actions of a woman unburdened by an immaculate conscience. Mary! Oh, God! Answer your yoke, me, honey. He can't see you. It's me, Josiah! Please, tell him I don't... Let her go! Oh, God, Mary, I'm sorry. I didn't want... God hates vanity. So do I! The outsider woman has this world's destruction in her womb. But Val and his apostates stole away the unborn enemy. The fiend's father has escaped. She will bear her filth a year before dawn. We have only these few hours to find her and kill her and save this paradise from hell everlasting. Where is she? Where did Val take her? I can't. I can't. This is for you, Josiah. Make the woman scream. No. 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 Where's the woman? The womb that harbors the Antichrist. No. No. Strengthen the rebellious angel. I have no fear. Destroy. Enemy of my enemy! Enemy of my enemy! Enemy of my enemy! Hell, I have to make it stop. Got it, got it. For simple laws. No. Oh, oh, God! Please! Where is the woman? Where did Val take her? Stop! Stop! Tell you! I'm sorry, Mary. I'm so sorry. Where is the woman? The mines of the mountain. Val has her in the mines. You'll never get her back. Not before the birth. We are the hands of the Lord. We cannot fail. The world dies screaming. Thank you, Zuzan. Your God and all the Americans. Look. <laughs> Give the woman They always hurt women to punish men. It's sick. It's cowardly. At the very end of the game, Sullivan is encountered one final time by Blake after Lynn dies from childbirth in the church. Sullivan tells Blake that he slaughtered the entire town and that he failed, that it was too late and the Antichrist has already been born, and that the apocalypse is unavoidable. Bound by his own religion, he won't let himself kill Blake's newborn and instead begs Blake to kill his own child before slitting his own throat in sorrow. Oh God. We're taking care of my children, but yours, I am powerless against. 
The child's too strong already. You've murdered paradise. God has gone silent. Since the storm, the birth. Who will he have if he destroys us all? Who will he have left to punish? I killed my children. All of them. Every last one. There's no more perfect faith than that. And still, God is silent. Kill that child if you can. If you love anything at all, crush its skull under your heel. I know God doesn't hear dead men, but I expect he answers them. <laughs> Alias Papa North Career Shoe Salesman Preacher Reverend Affiliation, Testament of the New Ezekiel, Born, 1933, Age, 80, Sex, Male, Hair, Black, Partially Bald, Eyes, Brown, Status, Deceased, Died, 2013, Manner of Death, Suicide, By Slitting His Own Throat.